In this video I'll take you through my journey of creating an open world for my game, or at least the base for it. Also, I'll show my progress, sharing what I've learned, and how I've improved my workflow over the past 4 months since the last devlog. And just for context, here's our starting point. That's how the environment looked like for 5-ish months ago. And skill-wise, this was basically what I was capable of creating when it comes to environment. So yeah, let's get started. To understand the structure of the first map, let me explain the world and the idea behind it. The player starts in the middle of the world map, and this specific area here is our starting point and the first map we're working on. The concept is to give players the freedom to choose their own path and explore in the direction they want. So we need to keep this non-linearity in mind when building the first map. So we encourage player exploration. Now that we have that covered, let's create our landscape. From the first devlog, I already had a landscape, but it didn't fit the world. It was a bit too small, so I decided to delete it because we don't need it anymore. And here are the settings for our new landscape. Next, we need textures. I want textures that are not too realistic, but also not too stylized. For the grass texture, it's basically just green with minimal detail and a height map for smooth transitions. The same goes for the dirt texture. However, I'm not a fan of the dirt texture, to be honest, as it looks fine outside of the landscape material, but looks somehow oversaturated when used within the landscape material. So if you have an idea what's causing this, please let me know. And for the cliffs, I've used these two textures that I'm using for like angled areas, mountains, or just hard surfaces. I had a hard time creating seamless textures efficiently. I tried a lot of techniques, a lot of manual work, it just took way too long, and in the end it didn't even look good because I'm lacking skill. But luckily, I discovered Material Maker. It's an open source and free alternative to Substance Designer and allows you to easily create seamless textures through non-destructive procedural generation. Material Maker also provides a huge online library that you can learn from, use as a base, or directly use without modification if you want to. Plus, it's also accessible directly from the client, so you can literally just load textures from their library, modify them, or just see how they do things and then apply them to your materials. It's actually pretty awesome and it helped me a lot. And here are some textures I created using Material Maker. So instead of using automated methods for landscape painting, I opted to paint the paths, and for now the mountains, manually. However, uh, let me show you another technique that I'll use more frequently in the future for mountains, so I don't have to paint them manually. To use the landscape custom brushes, you'll need to enable the landmass plugin by Epic Games. Once enabled, you can, you can access it through the landscape mode, and just select blueprints, then simply click on your landscape, boom, you have something very simple looking, but you can just experiment with various parameters, such as paint layers, blurring, curl noise, displacement, and smooth blending. This method is also non-destructive and extremely convenient for creating mountains. And the coolest thing is you can easily duplicate a mountain by just holding Alt, dragging it, then you can adjust the parameters of the new mountain, or just adjust the height by dragging it up and down in the z-axis and boom, you have a new mountain. Another method and how the previous mountains were created that you see in the background is with height maps in the landscape mode with the mask brush tool thingy. You just have to increase the strength and size of your brush a lot. Select the height map for a mountain or similar and then you just click on your landscape. Easy as well, but not non-destructive. But you could however just paint these mountains on a new la layer and it would be like semi non-destructive I guess. But I will definitely use both landscape brushes and height maps in the future to create stuff like mountains or cool surfaces. But to be honest I prefer the blueprint brush method a lot more for mountains at least. Grass makes a huge difference. Just look at this 
and this shot. That's why I've put a lot of effort into trying to make the grass look as good as possible. But how did I make the grass? First, you'll need an alpha mask, which defines the shape of your grass. Mine looks like this. After that, I modeled a simple X in Blender and UV unwrapped it to match the texture. Now let's jump straight into Unreal and get started. Here's what I did. Just add the alpha texture in your grass mask material, then use a base color or you use a virtual texture to sample the color of the landscape, which I did, and add some wind, and you'll have somewhat good looking grass. The same process applies to flowers, other plants, as well as tree leaves. And speaking of trees, let's talk about how I created the tree model. I use a software called Treeit, which is free, just like all the software I've used so far in this video. With Treeit, you can basically generate all kinds of trees procedurally by adjusting a few parameters. And that's basically it. Uh, it's also pretty fun to experiment with, so give it a try. And the material for the tree bar, I've also created in, in Material Maker. When it comes to water and clouds, I didn't do much because Unreal Engine had me covered there. However, I didn't use their water system yet due to some weird behavior to the landscape. Instead, I've just used the material that comes with, with the Epic Games water plugin. What I did was basically I created a spline blueprint and made a huge plane in, in Unreal's modeling mode, which I, by the way, absolutely love. It's incredibly useful. Then I applied the material that comes with Unreal to the plane, dragged the spline around the map where I wanted the water to be. Although I didn't even modify the water material, it already looks cool. So thanks to the Unreal Engine team, but we'll get deeper into the water, no pun intended, in some future episodes. So let's leave it at that. The video was supposed to end at this point, but as you can tell, it didn't. The reason it took over 4 months to release this devlog was that I wanted to have a bigger town. Originally it was supposed to be just this area and the elevated commercial platform around the town. But then I decided to make it a lot bigger. And yeah, it was quite a lot of work, but enough whining. Let's talk about how I create props. I use Blender for modeling and for texture painting I use 3D Code Textura. With 3D Code you can easily draw in a non-destructive way in a layer based system, create smart materials and adjust them to your liking. You can just upload your own textures and create new smart materials. That's why it works great in combination with tools like Material Maker or Substance Designer. Please note that 3D Code costs around 90 bucks as a one-time payment. For me, the investment was worth it and I think it's a relative fair price, as long as it's not a subscription. There's also a Blender plugin that allows for a cool layer system, but by the time I discovered it, I was already way too used to 3D code. The walls and similar meshes were created with modularity in mind, and as someone who has never made a modular kit before, this task was quite challenging, because everything matters. Like if you have a little offset on some metrics, it can ruin everything. When I create a building type, I usually create them in a packed level actor. So first you just build a building with these modular meshes. Then you select them, right click it, go on the level and create packed level actor. This allows you to use blueprints for that building. So you can just alt drag that packed level actor building, drag it to another place. Let's say in the blueprint you've scripted it that way so you can just add a new window mesh instead of the one that you already have. In the original one you create a whole new look for that building without doing much. You just alt drag it to another place, replace the mesh or the material. So this allows you to change materials or specific meshes and make duplicated buildings look different in an easy way. Another thing how you can make buildings look different and have some variety for the same building type are props in front or on the buildings or you could use decals or you could use vertex painting to introduce some variety but I didn't use vertex painting yet for this devlog but will in the future. And finally, the result. Although it may not seem like much, I think going from where we 
where like four to five months ago to where we at now is pretty decent progress. So I'm pretty happy with it. I've learned a lot. But before we wrap it up, there's one more thing to address. If you notice that the character model looked weird and the animations were off, it's because I stopped working on it. The chibi model that is. But this should only serve as a teaser for the coming episodes where we introduce a new character model. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. If you didn't watch the previous episode, watch that. And if the next episode is already up, you can watch that. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.